So uh, I've been going. What, is that? what are you talking about? So oh. there's there's a uh, there's like it it grows, but a lot of the time, like I've been trying to get interviewers to come in and do this, but it's it, trying to get people that that like have a, a knowledge in something is difficult and. A lot of times, I feel like we're gonna have to fucking move at some point. A lot of times, uh, we we get trying to get somebody that has like an opinion on you something. Earth, uh, we can a little bit. A lot of times, getting an opinion of of somebody who like has a knowledge in something is hard. Like we can pick somebody and talk about them, but at some point, the the conversation dries up, right. and then you're like, well, okay. And then you're down to that dumb shit that I was avoiding with work, where it's like. So how's the weather today? It's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. It's uh, you, you get to a point where you're just like, hey, or you just the head nods. Yeah. Like when you pass the same people over and over again, like you don't even speak at some point. Like that's you just one thing. Kind of avoid eye contact. Yeah, that's one thing I see at work all the time, dude. You like we walk by people and like you just don't even acknowledge each other anymore. It's like you just walk by and you either look away or you're just like, hi. And even a smile sometimes like you're like, is that, is that a real smile? Is that a fake smile? Is that an acknowledgement? What are we doing here? Like human nature in America has gotten very, very weird. Uh, autonomous. Yeah. Very yeah. Autonomous. It's, it's becoming routine. Yeah. And, um, I, I saw like something similar when I was in college. Uh, I mean, you know, I just got out of the military, so I guess maybe my mentality was different, but it feels like I, I don't want to say like I went back in time or like I was kept like in jail or something, you know, but like it was like being released to the wild again. Well, there is a little bit of that, right? I, I mean, kind of, I guess like socially, I was never much of a social person in school. Like that's why I partied and then I'd get drunk and I'd become a lot more sociable. But mm -hmm. as far as like, I've always kind of had like my insecurities as far as like being social, like my biggest con my I don't know this concern my biggest thing was that I uh, I never really kind of knew like how to how to act socially yeah kind of because I'll get like out of control I'll get like I'll get on some really uh, like fucked up topics and I'll just let myself keep going until the point where people were like did you just say that <laughs> like, yeah, I, I did just say that is that and, because it's not socially acceptable uh, I don't know maybe it depends on the subject we're talking about I just feel like a lot of I'm just a lot of people have told me, like, I just don't have a filter because I'll just let things out. Yeah, I do that all the time. And uh, I try, and that's, that's when, like, when I really get around people I enjoy being around, like, I just, the filter just completely goes away, and I just fucking let loose. And it's just, like, I don't really think about what I say. It's just kind of how I feel at the time or what I think at the time. And I think that that's better. I mean, I think we live in a cookie-cutter world where people are sugarcoating everything, and it's like people get upset. Like, they really genuinely get upset. About their well, feelings when we, you say something that we, offends them. You know, we definitely live in a very, uh, what's this term, snowflake? Like in a very yeah. snowflake society right now where you have to have a safe space if you feel uncomfortable to, to relax in. And it's a very unique situation. Like right now, I can't imagine going to college right now. Like worrying about... That's why I stopped going. Yeah. Like going to a situation where you don't know if you should be sh using she, him, it's oh, like God. Dude, whatever. If you ever have to even think that. It was like socially, it's shit. it's so say what weird, you gotta man. Say, man. Because you know what? In the end, you know, I'm. I heard something. I don't know when, but I, I started to uh, I started to say it more, and I'm starting to believe it more. That if you say something that offends me, or if if, if I don't like you, like that's a me problem, not a you problem. If you don't like me, well, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Anything that you do that has an effect on me, now that's my fucking problem. And that's what, something I got to deal with. Interesting. Right? It's true, though. I got to crunch that in my head a little bit more, but you might be right. Because in, if I let anybody, it doesn't matter what, if I let anybody have an effect on me, that's a me problem. That means I have a problem controlling something with my emotions or my anger or my frustrations. kind of the same thing, but... In a way, right? Like the, you do lend power to people when they when exactly. you let them get That's under exactly your skin. That's exactly what it is. Um, because, for example, I was listening to that stupid Carrie Underwood song. I don't know why I was on the radio. The one where she, which is the one that she beats up her boyfriend's truck. That's her only song, you mean? Yeah, the I was listening to that stupid has. song. But I was thinking about that. I'm like, she destroys his truck. She keys up his truck. Whatever the fuck the song says. Yeah. And I'm like, if the guy would have came out with the new chick and he seen his truck like like beat up, and then would have been like, all right, let's go take an Uber back to my place. We're gonna fuck anyways. Like. Ultimately, that wouldn't have pissed her off anymore. Like, she would have been like, fuck, it ain't a get under his skin, right? Like, yeah. If he would have circumvented that whole thing, 
It would have been like, whatever. Then she, he still would have had to fix the truck, but ultimately he would have still got his way and she would have been pissed off that he got his way. So he would have not given her the power to get mad. Well, what if she would have just been like, fuck it, I'm just going to fuck all your friends now and say it. <laughs> That's a possibility too. Also a possibility. All right, so I guess we should get into I say, it. We, we didn't say an intro. We didn't say we just shit. talking. Okay, so you and I take classes together. Okay. And so you had a very interesting like mindset on like the military because you're ex-military. So I don't know how much of yourself you want to talk about, like personal details. But So let, let's, let's start in the beginning. And if you want to give details about yourself, you can. You're more than well happy to. Because um, you and I got into an interesting talk about like the SEALs and, and uh, all kinds of stuff. But you, you were in the military for like how long? About six years. Six years. So you, how old were you when you went in? I was 20. 20. I had to do an extra year in high school. That's why I was 20. I'm super smart. I was one of those kids that <laughs> fucked off. And uh, <laughs> when push came to shove, when they were like, you want to drop out and start working, I was kind of like, well, when you say it like that, not really. Like, I really do like want to accomplish something. Right. I just felt like nobody ever gave a shit. Like, nobody wanted to help me. And if it wasn't for uh, my my... English teacher like I, I was always like you guys throw me in like English literature we learn about fucking Shakespeare and Macbeth how the fuck does that have anything to do with English you know what I mean I'm like I don't yeah. even know how to use punctuation marks <laughs> and how to write in, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean I'm like and yeah. you guys are and you wonder why I'm failing I don't even know what I'm doing and so they put me in like a practical English class which is full of a bunch of uh, other real super smart <laughs> stellar <laughs> performers and uh, but he happened to be the wrestling coach too so he's kind of a hard ass and uh, he just kind of demonstrated over over the, I guess what the the year or whatever the I was in school uh, that he actually I kind of always needed that like uh, male mentorship companionship uh, somebody to like hold me accountable and yeah break off in my ass if you're acting like a fucking idiot. I think males need that to a certain extent for yeah, sure. Yeah, especially if you didn't have like a very uh, positive father figure around, which I kind of lacked. Um, but he like he was really cool, and uh, one day I came in fucking high as shit. I used to get blazed out in the morning and go in class. <laughs> Maybe that was your English problem. Yeah, that's, that's probably a lot of my problems. <laughs> I just, but I, I was just you know a typical teenager, didn't give a fuck about anything. I was angry at the world. Yeah. Um, and he was like, you know, hey, are you you feeling all right? He's like, I need to talk to you on the hall. And I'm like, okay. He's like, are you feeling all right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. He's like, because if you need to go home, like, I understand. And, like, I didn't really get what he was getting at. And I was like, I, I feel fine. And he kind of asked me. He's like, I'm going to ask you again. And he's like, I, I feel fine, you know. And uh, I, I genuinely was confused. Like, what, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And then he's like, all right. He's like, like I said, though, if you need to go home, I understand. And I'll, you know, put you down sick and you go home. And then I'm like, no, nah, I feel good. And then, like, he kind of, like, looked at me. He's like, you some fucking vising, idiot. <laughs> and, like, it dawned on me what he was doing. I was like, oh, shit. He's giving you an out. Yeah, yeah. So um, he just, he helped out a lot. Like, shoot, I stayed after class. He helped me figure out, like, what I was doing wrong. And then uh, I had actually gotten some trouble at the time, and I had to see this, like, probation psychologist and, uh, with a bunch of other fucking retard kids. And all of them were like, this guy's a fucking douche, this guy's a dick, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting in this room, like, looking at all these punk-ass kids. I'm like, I guess I'm one of these guys. I'm like, it's really not. Like, all you have to do is just shut the fuck up and do what they're telling you to do, and you'll be out of this. And you can go back to doing whatever you guys want to do. So that's basically what I did. And he was actually one of the guys who was like, you know what? He looked at my grades, like, all left since seventh grade and whatever, and was like, Jesus, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I don't do well in school. Like, I can't just sit there and and learn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not my thing. I'm right. Way too hyper. And then uh, he's like, okay, well, let's get you started and let's get you get you working. Let's get you a GED. I'm like, I don't want to really want to quit. Like, I'd like to prove, you know, for my grandparents, I'd like to show them like I could be the first of my brothers and sisters and my cousins graduate from high school. It's kind of a big deal. And uh, He's like, okay. He's like, well, uh, he kind of showed me how to use the planner. He's like, you're going to come in here once a week. I'm going to hold you accountable for your grades, and you're going you're gonna to turn it around. He's like, it's not that hard, and he's like, you could do this. I was like, okay. 
and I'd quit smoking weed and I was like I really wanted to just get out of trouble and not be that guy so he uh he's like so what's going on with homework? He's like, I'm like, I, dude, I can't do homework. I'm like, I've never had a good home environment, you know. I'd fucking, go, when I was a kid, I'd go home, hey, Dad, can you help me with my homework? <laughs> fucking ask your mom. Fuck out of here. And then uh, <laughs> I'd ask my mom. She's like, oh, no, I don't know, honey. I'm too fucking high. I can't help you do shit right now. So guess what I didn't do? I didn't do homework. Right. And uh, it just, it's weird. We're just creatures of, like, habit and patterns. And what, if you just keep doing something long enough, it just becomes second nature. You don't even think about it. You just, you just know what to do. So he's like, kind of looked at me, like kind of confused, scratched his head. And he's like, you know, if, if you can't do homework at home, he's like, then don't go home. Don't leave school until it's done. And I was like, wow, that actually makes a lot of fucking yeah. sense. Yeah. Come, I never thought of that. So that's what I started doing. And then I just started doing all my assignments and I started filling out this planner and he told me to start scratching everything off and I was done with it. And every Friday I'd go in and do it. And within no time I was getting straight A's. And then my English teacher I was telling you about, he, uh, he calls me over to the desk one day after class. He's like, hey, let me uh, speak to you after class. I was like, all right. And bell rings, everyone leaves. He's like, come here, I want you to see something. And like he has like my grades pulled up and he's like, here's your grades like six months ago or whatever. And he's like, here's your grades now. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, here's your grades last year. Here's your grades last the year before. And here's your grades the year before. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you went from practically having straight Fs to having straight A's. I'm like, what do you, I don't, okay. I don't really <laughs> get what you're getting out here. I'm like, because I actually had some people trying to help me out. I'm like, I didn't really do much. He's like, I think you've actually done a lot. He's like, this is, he said, this is fucking remarkable. And I was like, I, I didn't get it. I'm like, I don't really think it's a remarkable. I was just doing what I was supposed to do. Somebody actually held me accountable for once. Right. Like, I, I realized how much I needed that and appreciated that. And then after 9-11, I was, wanted to go in the military anyway. So it just kind of made sense. And, like, I, I wanted to, to do that. Like, I need that that structure. I mean, I'd still be in there today if it wasn't a bunch of fucking bullshit. But so, so what grade were you in when 9-11 happened? Um... I believe I was a sophomore. I was 16, so I believe I was a sophomore. Um, and, like, I don't know, probably six months or nine months after that, you just, I don't know, man, as, as high school kept going on, um, high school's a fucked up time for some kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think yeah. There's a lot of kids. Through hormone changes, yeah. body mm-hmm. changes, the social scene. Like, I fucking hated the social scene. I've always had, like, a fuck you mentality towards yeah. everybody. Like, I've always kind of kept my circle pretty small. So, yeah. Like, I might associate with some people, but, like, I don't hang out with a lot of people. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, like, I've always tried to be good. Even at school, like, I always tried, you know, when you're young, there's some tough guy bullshit and stupid, stupid shit. But even then, like, I always try to kind of just get along with everybody. It only made sense. You know what I mean? That why make more friends than enemies. Right. Yeah. That's a good um, philosophy in life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it keeps like drama free is the way to be. I yeah. hate drama. I hate fucking bullshit. I'm right there with you, dude. Like mm-hmm. if somebody like that's what I always deal with in like in high school. Like if you want to get tough, to fucking do something. All, everybody wants to run their mouth. Like yeah. I'm, I'm not about that at all. I hear you. We'll any any girl I've ever dated knows that I, that's my philosophy. I'm like I hate fucking drama. Save the moment the I got drama, drama I'm over this. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like um but it was just, it was interesting. So I was like, I got angry and angrier and like watching that shit happen. Like 9-11 was a crazy time. And now we live in a world where we got fucking kids running around. They were in, still in the nutsack. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They didn't, they didn't even, yeah. they don't even yeah. understand. Like how old do you, they, you're they, probably they, the same age. Yeah, yeah, was like same. Yeah. Well, he's a little younger than I am, but. Yeah, like a few months younger. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. he's, he's uh, he just turned, you just turned 30, right? So yeah. what, you guys were like 13 when that happened? Uh, we were, we were freshmen. We were freshmen. Yeah, we were freshmen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you were so one. Yeah, I was a sophomore, maybe a junior, like somewhere around that time yeah. frame. Um, so I was 16, going on maybe It changed the country. 17. Oh, dude. The dude, feeling the, changed. Yeah, dude, and for like months, like everyone was like fucking. Everybody America. had the stickers. Remember the stickers? We're going to fucking kill fucking everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that, was, that was exactly it. We're going to kill everybody. It didn't yeah. matter who. Just no, like, everybody. And it's, and it's, you know. Everybody had I, the stickers in the cars. Yeah. Remember everybody selling bumper stickers for the cars? Every yeah. single car had a bumper sticker. Yeah. United we stand. Never forget. And then now look. Fucking forgotten. No one gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Muslim sympathizers everywhere. Well, I think I think some of it, too, is also that we've um, 
we've added confusion too with that that whole event and a lot of conspiracy theories involved and a lot of people wondering if there's something right. going on uh, right. and additionally and then we're also starting to think that there's more i think it's more common now that people are more open to the idea that there is some government kind of in situation and influence going on in there somewhere yeah um i know i i i don't even know how to address this subject because i, I kind of feel like i should tread lightly right um, so we'll get back to high school so you saw you saw high school and you you saw 9 11 and you said like i need to do something about this and i think that was a lot of people's inkling at the moment yeah, right I, it was before i kind of got in trouble i was just i don't know man just i was at a point me and my mom were just button heads. My mom got in some trouble, um, like legally, and like it, it just and got, lost her job, um, and just I don't know. I lived with my me and her lived with my uncle, who was a fucking diehard alcoholic, uh, who's also a manic depressive, mm-hmm. and so like coming home to a dude like every night that's just fucking hammered, and like he looks like he just wants to fucking destroy you. We never got in a fight or nothing like that, at least, like, physically, but, like, there was a lot of verbal stuff, and just, like, he was just mean to my fucking mom all the time, and I felt like I could never do anything because we'd be out on the streets and nowhere to live, moving back to my grandma's house. So, like, I just bit my tongue, and, like, I just kind of dealt with it, and uh, he he was he was very much an asshole for, for many years, but at the same time, like, I was probably a fucking asshole, too, you know what I mean? Um, but 9-11 happened, some months went by, and I was like, fuck it. I hit a point, I don't know what, it's probably some girl problems, too, involved. That's this, always a variable, one, right? Fucking, yeah, <laughs> my, my first, like, girlfriend, and she was a real winner. Um, <laughs> just, that was a fucking disaster. That was a bomb going off on my, on my mind and on my heart. That's, the, women are easy for men, like, a way to just completely f- just swirl things up in your head oh, so oh, easily dude, man like, honestly like she's a i don't know she's had her own struggles in life I, I don't look back and say you know like i'm i'm 32 years old now i'm not looking at her and i see her back home when i go home and we talk and i'm I wasn't you know, friends with her or anything like that but like all my hatred for her is gone like right you, you know, almost have to right like at some point shit. you have to I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, geez, well there was there was a lot of fucked up shit and i won't get into <laughs> it all um but there was a lot of fucked up shit and just after that, that was another, like, fuck it. I had a moment. We had this Marine Corps recruiter that would come around our school. Uh, and he was a fucking badass. Had a fucking bullet hole in his face. <laughs> oh, jeez. Jeez. Yeah, I was like, wow. And, but he was super calm, super nice guy. And I was like, look, dude, I'm thinking about joining the Marine Corps. And uh, he's like, all right. So we, we went out. Had some like lunch once or twice. We talked, and uh, he told me kind of about himself and how he was like in force reconnaissance and fucking dude could speak like five different languages. Wow! Like he was an impressive, impressive guy, and uh, he started telling me all kinds of just like he almost did the opposite of recruiting. You know what I mean? I think kind of what happened he was telling me about himself and how he like I basically like. He, they put him in recruiting to kind of like de-escalate this guy and kind of get him back to he had been through some shit and I think they, they were trying to just help him rehabilitate back to society a bit if that that's sense. interesting yeah well, that's interesting they would Maybe, choose to put him in that in that situation uh, yeah because kids can help you out man like kids mm. can really like change everything about like they'll really make you calm down I was when I worked for the school district that they'd ask me all the time like I went to a couple different job interviews. Uh, at the initial one I got hired at and then another one that I was trying to transfer for like they're like how do you how do you feel about you know working around children I'm like oh kids are easy man I'm like fucking adults are more childish than children like, kids <laughs> in many don't, ways kids, right yeah. yeah kids you can't like you can't get mad at them because they don't understand they don't right. know what they're doing it's adults and you're like you're being a vindictive piece of shit like you're, right. you're deliberately trying to get back at somebody for something they did to you and that's fucking wrong right mm-hmm. like kids there's a certain like ignorance and it's not a bad ignorance it's just an ignorance of the circumstances versus it's like adults innocence. who do it for for spites yeah or, or for whatever intentions they're trying to get right yeah yeah they can scream and yell i'm mean, kids but like, they can scream and yell and there's times where we're like fucking god i want to put a bullet in my head but, <laughs> yeah, at the same time like they just they need they need something, somebody to show them how to be. They right. Need, and like, and if you, 
my dad never really did a lot of that. He was the exact opposite. He actually showed me a lot of what not to be, which is kind of a good thing, but also not very good because at a younger age, I was fucking nuts. I was mad all the time. Well, when you're young, it's like you got two choices. When you see behavior like that, you either try to like mimic it because you think that's what you're supposed to do or you, you no. look at it and analyze it and say, I need to do the opposite of this. No, it's, it's exactly monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So it was interesting working with, with uh, that recruiter for a little while, just talking, bullshit mostly. Um, he's like, what, what would you want to do? I'm like, fucking give me a machine gun. That's, that's all I want to do. <laughs> it's like the Halo mentality. Like Halo came out around our age, and it's yeah, like everybody wanted, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, everybody so wanted to go in. Uh, and I think that that's another kind of interesting subject, but... Uh, I think what happened was the guy kind of saw like a former version of himself mm. and I was, he's like, I was, like I said, I was still 16, maybe it just turned 17. Uh, and he's like, you, he's like, you're not even 18 years old, man. I'm like, I'm ready to go tomorrow, dude. Like I fucking hate school. My home life sucks. I got nothing going on. Was this before you turn your grades around? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This was before all that happened. And, uh. That's when we were talking, and he was kind of like, you know, basically telling me some stuff about, like, special operations and how, like, they're a little bit better avenue to get into if combat is what you want to do. And uh, I was like, okay. And he's like, most people don't really realize this. He's like, you, they don't talk about this openly. He's like, but you got to, when you stack up on a door with a team full of guys, like, you got a really high probability of getting shot by one of your own teammates. Mm. It's just this, close confinement with weapons you know what i mean and some of these guys aren't aren't the highest trained individuals like, that's a that's a different mentality when you get into like that's the time of like force reconnaissance which is now the marsoc i don't i don't really know the marine corps aspect of special operations um but he's like you know you're not even 18 he's like and it's kind of difficult to get minors in he's like i could do it he's like but would your would your parents sign off on it and i was like Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like, I could make my mom do it. Like, I could, I drive her to the point where she'd just be like, "Get the fuck out of here! I want you gone." And he's like, "Fuck." And he ended up telling me, like, you know, he, uh, if this is something you want to do, then that's fine. He's like, but he's like, if you want my opinion, he's like, I think you should stay in high school, get your diploma, and uh, if this is something you want to do, still, he's like then come talk to me he's like but you dropping out of school now and just joining the marine corps not even getting an adult diploma or nothing he's like this is going to have effects on you later um he's like honestly he's like let me tell you something the marine corps ain't fucking going anywhere and this war ain't going anywhere. oh yeah i think i think we we miss out like there's those key people in your life who like sometimes help guide you in certain spots and it seems like that teacher was definitely one of those for you yeah. and maybe even this guy was was one for you yeah no I've, I've learned that like i don't know everything happens in life for a reason whether you like that or not like you meet people in life that have like some type of gravitational pull on you in one one way or another and it's it's not by happenstance absolutely not you know what i mean so I mean, because who knows? Like, I've met strangers out of nowhere, you know what I mean, that would say something to you that's just like, what the, what the fuck, dude? What, like, did you really just, like, say that? Because it had to do or something in a way that was something just fits was on a puzzle mind. that yeah, you've been working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like, this is not coincidence. And there's, there's a lot of people that want to believe that, though. They want to believe that shit's just coincidence. And, I mean, if that's what you think, then that's what you think. But I, I'm, I'm past that point in my life. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, it, like, the higher level of education you have going in, like, it also affects your pay in the military, right? Um, it, it depends, man. It depends on, like, what you get into. Hmm. If you go in as an officer, sure. As an enlisted, I don't know. Like, there's so much stuff they'll give you, like, in contract, but it, it depends on the job you do. Excuse me, but uh, I don't... I don't look back at that and say, like... I mean, maybe they would have gave you, like, I don't say it affects your pay, but, like, if you had some college or something, they may start you off. Instead of, like, as an E1, you might be able to get, like, E2 or E3. Um, and all that stuff's kind of negotiable. So when you go in there, like, you can negotiate, like, what you're going to get? is How much leeway you have? 
uh, if you know, if you have somebody goes with you that knows what they're doing, there's a lot of leeway. Hmm. But the problem is nobody knows what they're doing. And parents, if they're not, they weren't in some time in their life, they don't really know what they're doing. And they have a way of, you know, everyone says, oh, my recruiter lied to me. There's kind of like this, eh, I wouldn't say my recruiter lied to me, but at the same time, like, if you know you're misleading the truth, wouldn't you call that a lie? Yeah. They'll kind of tell you enough of the truth to be like, okay, but... There so what, some, what do you what do you feel like that he didn't fill you in on? Uh, just I ended up signing an extra two year reenlistment automatically. Yeah, well, he told me that I had to basically oh, wow. because well, here's how it works. So when you go in um, to like any, and this is for what I'm speaking of. It's like for the Navy because that's all I know about. Like other branches of service, I'm sure there's stuff something similar. But when you tr- when you uh, want to do what's considered a special program, so for the Navy, it's SEAL, SWIC, EOD, diver, uh, I think rescue, like crewmen for, for helicopters, um, anything that's like a special program, um, you have to do what's called an obligation of service, meaning upon your completion of training, you will obligate in an additional amount of time because training was so long. Because they're extensive programs. Right. So you still have like a commitment to to perform some sort of service because most of the initial two years you're going to be training. Yeah. I mean, just getting in through BUDS and SQT and getting in the SEAL team is, you know, roughly a two year pipeline, you know, roughly a year and a half. Hmm. Just depends. Like if you get hurt, if you get rolled um, for whatever reason. Um, So it can it can be a year, year and a half, two year pipeline. And uh, so upon that completion date, you're obligated to serve an additional amount of, of months, which for theirs at the time was like 51 months. Um, but so if you already have some time left on your contract, then you're going to need this extra time. But like he told me that I, I should just sign now because I'd get the reenlistment bonus for it now. And uh, which was a kind of a scam because out of a five thousand dollar reenlistment bonus, I got like twenty six hundred dollars. Well, would it? Well, <laughs> well, first of all, why didn't you get the full five thousand? Because they tax it. Oh, okay. Uh, wouldn't you get that anyways at reenlistment time? Um, sh- y- yes, but it's different with an obligation of service. But yeah, you're still at some point if your if your time's up, you're gonna reenlist. So, uh, yes and no. Honestly, if you make it through. Some a special program, your reenlistment bonus would be higher. So instead of being like, "Hey, I need to reenlist for like a year and a half," which at the time basically was like the ob- obligation of service that I would have had to done had had I made it through that program mm-hmm. the first time around. Um, so, you know, I go in so many months in boot camp, so many months in this other school, and then if you go right to buds from there, then you're looking at six months of buds, six months or more like SQT pending so so for so let me stop you there but for those that are listening that don't know is like the special program uh, or special yeah, ops basic training, right? underwater demolition seal training and that's all what like special ops guys have to go through that's what you go through if you want to be a seal okay so like all the other ones you named the ones that like i didn't SWIC, recognize uh they have so uh, the navy has uh seal swick eod diver and air crewmen. They'd all have to go through BUDS. No, they all have to go through their own program. Okay, so that's specifically for SEALs. Yeah, BUDS, that's okay. why it's basic underwater demolition, SEAL training. Okay. Um, SWIC is special warfare, combatant craft crewmen. They take SEALs and other special ops out on gunboats, and uh, whether it's on the ocean or rivers, stuff like that. So why are SEALs like the most well known? Is because they, they do the, the most highly specialized stuff? Because uh, I've never heard of SWIC, you said? Yeah, Swick is honestly like they're bad fucking dudes, man. They're bad. It's it's a mini buds. I mean, it's, they're doing the same shit that we we're doing. Um, it's just instead of doing the full hell week that they do, it's like a three and a half day or four day hell week, which is still fucking brutal. Yeah. Um, I had a buddy that that's what he wanted to do. We were in a training program in Virginia, and uh, it was for all of us for SEAL, diver, EOD. Swick, anybody wanted to go in those special programs, we could go there and train with dudes that were in the SEAL teams or EOD, and uh, we worked out and helped them out with stuff around their offices and uh, helped them logistically with some of their planning stuff and 
we were kind of just like extra grunts for them when they needed muscle or they needed bodies for for stuff um but we got the opportunity to get kind of an inside view of of the community and uh work out get get ready physically and mentally for for this program so we'd swim and run and, and pt every day it was a really good program uh and my my buddy he he wanted to go swick and he did it made it first time fucking killed it in, in swick from what i know he made it over to dev Guru, which is the naval special warfare development group that's like top tier shit mm-hmm. um and that's not what they call themselves now, but essentially that's what they were called. Um, so he went over there. I, I haven't talked to him in years, but he was doing that. But, I mean, he that program is no joke either, you know what I mean? Uh, the, if, to answer your question, why SEALs are most well-known, Hollywood, movies, I mean, they're okay. bad motherfuckers. They're, I mean, but I, I don't understand... Uh, they they do do different stuff than Green Berets and Rangers and Marine Corps Recon, but um, they're just they're good at what they do, and that's kind of why they've gotten the rep. They've gotten the reputation because their warriors are fucking fierce. I mean, they've the guys that have died doing what they do. I mean, they have left a legacy behind because they they don't go out quietly. You know what I mean? Um, and they. The team that took down Osama, what was that? What special team was that? Um, that's what I was telling you, Dev Group. Um, it was previously, and like it's kind of known as SEAL Team Six, okay. um, but that's not their name anymore. But that's just like that's an unofficial title. Just like uh, for the Army, they have Delta Force. They don't go by that anymore. That's an unofficial title, but I mean they still call them that in small circles or maybe you know um civilians still know them as as delta force um from the last that i know they called them was cag uh combat applications group um so it's this dev grew is what team six kind of grew to be known as when they changed their name uh i don't really have the answer to those questions it's more of like for operational security reasons they changed their names interesting um makes sense and it's also like they were kind of supposed to be like um, tactics development guys. Like they were all handpicked uh, special operations. So like you don't even get into Dev Group if you weren't already in the SEAL teams. Like you have to get into the SEAL teams just to get the hand selected to be in in that team. So like honestly, if you're trying to get into those programs, I mean that's kind of where you want to go. Yeah, so it's like more of a condensed like they're handpicked from the special guys yeah, to be a special yeah. special group. It's not a the best of yeah, the best. Yeah. So, all right, so you enlisted, then you went to where? Uh well, where do you want me to tell you? So you went to training <laughs> where? Where do they usually send send uh, uh, for, Navy? Well, for the Navy, they send all the recruits out to uh, Naval Station Great Lakes, which is uh, Recruit Training Command, RTC, and uh, that's where you go through your fucking boot camp, and uh, for some guys, they call it A school, um, but that's like your whatever rate, they call it a rate. In the Navy, it's a rate, and uh, Army, I don't know what the Air Force calls it, but the Army and the Marine Corps, it's an MOS. Um, I honestly couldn't even tell you what MOS stands for off the top of my head. Um, but it's just the title of your, like, the title of your job position. Like, so in the ra- Navy, it's a rate. I was an engineer in an EN. So, engineer A school was in Great Lakes, so I stayed there. So, after, after um, boot camp, depending on your rate, is when they send you to your A school. So some guys go to, like, Pensacola, Florida. I think some guys go to Mississippi. Some guys go to San Diego. Uh, it just depends on where your A school is at. Mine was in Great Lakes. I kind of stayed out there. I actually had a, uh, a girlfriend I was seeing out there at the time. I mean, I saw her for the whole time I was in the Navy. Um, but that's where I went initially was, was Great Lakes. And then after that, I got sent to uh, Norfolk, Virginia. So, this like despite whatever you sign up for. So even if you're like a front infantry guy, or if you're a 
like a, a tech of some sort, you're still going through the boot camp, right? Like you yeah. can, you're not you're not escaping that. No, you have to go through boot camp. Um, now it's a little different now. The Navy's kind of, and again, I only speak for the Navy because I don't know right. the other branches of service. Um, but for the Navy, like if you want to get into like. I know at least for the SEAL program, they use it, like, to me, and I'm not the only guy who's thought of this, like, they use that program as a massive recruiting tool hmm. um, because they know that so many guys are going to get in there and not make it, and they can send them wherever the Navy wants to send them. Like, you don't get to choose a job. You just go in, you say, oh, I want to be a SEAL. They're like, okay, we'll send you to this. You do a PT test, and if you pass, they'll put you in this. They'll give you orders to go to this to a BUDS class, so, and then – so what they were doing is putting all those guys together in boot camp. So it was like one giant boot camp that was all going to buds. And uh, wow, which I don't know if it's more beneficial or not, or if it's had any effect. Like they've sat down and told us stuff about like how basically like there's no way to to determine with any anything like who's gonna make it through these selection programs right because it's a test of fucking intestinal fortitude and right character right and your in your thinking ability i mean anybody can be tough it's not about being tough like tough is a seaman in today's society i disagree with you <laughs> yeah but there's different variations of tough right but how many guys are like i mean we even see it in class too how many guys are like you i'm bro i'm super tough man i'll, I'll take anybody down yeah and but there's get... a lot of bravado with that with that terminology tough and like I've seen tough motherfuckers. Me too. I've you fucking quit. Yeah. Because it's uh, it becomes a mental game that if you don't know how to use your head, if you don't know how to think, um, it'll it'll overwhelm you to a point where like you feel like a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's got a breaking point, right? Like, sure, but some I've people also can just keep pushing to a point where, and I've I've done it. I've I've watched myself do it. This is why. I think uh, a lot of guys in my predicament, like, you kind of kick yourself in the ass for the rest of your life because, you know, you fucking cracked in a moment of weakness. And I'm not, you know, I own I own my mistake. I own what I did. No, I don't blame me quitting on anybody in the world except except me. But I didn't know how to think at that time. You right. Know what I mean? And that's what they do. So, like, they, we would sit down in these, these classes during, uh, what do you call it, like, um, Bud's Prep. And they'd tell us about how, like, we were doing, like, psychological tests because there was some company who figured out they could, they could, fig they, they swore they could determine based on a psychological profiling test who was going to make it and who wasn't. And you know what? Bullshit. Because some people's motivation and some people's determination is different. Like, just because somebody might have thoughts that are different than other people's and I don't know really how they thought they were going to determine that. Um, but it's just confidence in yourself and also knowing how to be rational and control yourself, control your emotions, control what you're thinking and right. feeling so you can fucking push it out of the way and take care of the task at hand. Because I've met, more often than not, I've met guys that you wouldn't think, but we're going to make it. That, well, those are the guys that made it. And then you do have occasionally some guys you're like, this guy's a fucking beast. He's going to make it. But seen a lot of beasts not make it and that doesn't mean that they still weren't beasts there were dudes that were I mean, one of the guys in my class was a fucking he signed a pre a pro fighter like a year later I and mean, he'd been been training mma for his all through his teenage years and into adulthood i mean the guy had been doing jujitsu and kickboxing for fucking over 10 years each you know what i mean before he went to buds and he didn't make it so it's just a interesting it's i don't know it's just like it's like Dropping dominoes or something, you know what I mean? So what happens to the guys that like want to enlist in buzz? They go to that prep training school thing, and then they they fail it. Do they go back to basic training? Back no, to no, basic that's what camp? I was telling you. Like the Navy uh, used it as like a massive recruiting tool. I'm convinced of that because why not? Like why why have people come in and say, oh well, I don't want to go. I don't want to do those jobs, so I'm not going to join the Navy when they could like oh i'm gonna do the be in the seal teams they don't make it and the navy says okay now i'm we're sending you to wherever we need you 
So, um, and that's basically what happened. So for me, I went in on the back end of things changing. Like I was like on the, when I went in, it still was done the old fashioned way, mm-hmm. which was you had to go in under what was called a source rating. And there was like a, a sheet of jobs that were source ratings. And I didn't qualify for three of the ones that I wanted to do that were, had anything to do with firearms. Okay. Um, and that's where I got kind of stuck into picking pick an engine man. Um, so I had to pick a job and I had to go to, to a school. And then from there, uh, because I didn't pass the screening test the first time when I was in great lakes, uh, they sent me to the fleet. So I had to do two years in the fleet before I could even try out again to go to buds. So at that point, do they pick what you're going to do? Uh, they pick where you're going to go. Like I'm, what I'm going to do, that's my job, the EN, the, the rate. That's what you're going to do, which is where it's like billets. They have billets opened up, you know, every so often. And they have, let's say, uh, we have 35 engineman billets for E1 to E3 with the experience that you have, which is essentially a seaman, but they call us firemen. Um, so... You don't really get a choice. Your your detailer is like, oh, you're going here. Now there's all the stipulations. You can kind of work with them. Uh, if somebody knows your detailer, like their buddies, they can. You can always phone calls can be made. But when you're the unfortunate fuck like I was that didn't know shit and had no idea what the fuck to do, I was like crushed because I was convinced, dude, that like I was going to buds like mm-hmm. right when I joined the navy. Yeah. And my recruiter's like, oh, all you got to do is volunteer. They're going to have a day at the pool where you volunteer. And, like, they did, but it was fucking, uh, it was a shit show. And nobody ever told me that I could have gone down to the pool and trained with the dudes, like, that were on staff there for for that program. Because they have a small pool at Great Lakes there that they use for was called the dive motivators it was all the guys that wanted to get into special programs in the navy whether it was seal swick eod diver air crew you could go there before reveille so before 6 a.m you could wake up like four go down there pt with those guys and then you go back for to your division because all you essentially have to do is pass the screening test and then we can start the process to get you in into buds okay. why uh i didn't know that nobody explained that to me during boot camp and it wasn't until after I got out of boot camp went over across the street started kind of PTing with some guys that were in this program and that's when I was like oh so I can go down there anytime and work out with you guys they're like yeah basically and I by then I didn't have much time left I was like okay so I started doing that well it it takes a while you know what I mean if you're not in good shape like it takes a while to get in that shape and their their screening test is it's pretty physically demanding, especially because you got to swim. So what is it? What's the screen test? Uh, let's see. It's 500, 500 yards swim. Don't quote me on the times, but I think it's 12 or 14 minutes. That's the cutoff. So all these things are going to be, like I tell you, this, these are the minimums. So it's like 12 or 14 minutes. I want to say 14, but I'm not sure. Um, and then you got 10 minutes from the swim to change out be outside in pants and boots with, with a shirt on then you do max push-ups in two minutes um which at the time was a minimum of 42 uh max push-ups uh, or max excuse me max sit-ups of of 50 don't quote me on that roughly 50 um in two minutes and then max pull-ups which was a minimum of like six now those numbers sound pretty low and they are like it's not hard but i guarantee you like if you try out for that program and you did 42 push-ups and you stopped they're gonna say get the fuck out of here you do not have what it takes because obviously you're a bare minimum kind of guy right Mm. like they want to see you pushing the whole time so um really what they want to see is a lot higher scores than that now they have like competitive scores where I mean, maybe you could get a contract now if you didn't make those competitive scores, but it's so sought after that I, I would imagine that they're going to be like, no, nah, your, your scores aren't high enough. And they want, so what they want you swimming is like nines and under, and then you get 10 minutes, change out, and they want to see 100 push-ups, they want to see 100 sit-ups, they want to see 20 
20 pull-ups or more. And then you got a mile and a half run after that. And the minimum was like, uh, I think it was a 12 minute cutoff, but they want to see like nine minutes. So what's the rest time between like, you said 10 minutes to change to get ready for the push-ups, pull-ups and, and sit-ups, but what, do you have any time between two that? Two Okay. You have two minutes. Okay. I'm trying to think if I could do it. I'm like, my cardio it's, would be a little, little, tough, little. dude. I'm not, like the first time you do it, you have to, I mean, you really got to train just, right. just for that. I, I, I'm sure if you had a good, like if you learned a really good swimming technique, that'd be key for yeah, that first half of it. Yeah, you have to swim uh, combat side stroke, which uh, you could do freestyle, but you're going to die. This is in What's an, in combat side stroke? It's a it's a form of side stroke. Um, they call it the recovery stroke sometimes, um, or just the side stroke. It's a very low profile, very uh, energy conservative okay. swim on the side. But if you don't know how to do it, I mean, I spent two years in the pool every day, unless I was out out at sea, uh, training. Like I real like I had to swim religiously. It became my my new thing because you have to develop that technique. It's yeah, just, just like what we're doing oh, now. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like boxing or anything else. Like you can't just jump in there and know what to do. Right. So it you got to start training. You got to start learning how to master that stroke. Just because essentially you're always swimming with fins while you're there. And I swim way better with the fins on. Like that's I, I, that's all I ever did. I had a guy that I met. I he kind of taught me how to how to side stroke because I was just going over there. I was going over there on my lunch break between class and, and during A school. They'd give us like 45 minute lunch or whatever, and I'd run down to the pool. I'd change out as quick as I could. I'd swim for 20 minutes or 15 minutes, and then I'd change back out. I'd run over to the galley and I'd grab a grab and go lunch, which is like a sandwich and like a granola bar and and like an apple or a banana or something, and I'd head back. And I did this every day for the two, three months I was there, two months or whatever, three months I was there. Um, and then, like, they were just, I don't know, it's, it's its a long story to get into, but essentially, like, I didn't get much time to go to the pool. It only opened at a certain time. Oh, well, I had to be okay. at school. And, like, the, it's just military mentality. From six to this time, you had to you had to be here at the barracks. You had to do room inspections every morning. So it's like I wasn't given a whole lot of time. There were days like I would fucking, I don't know. You start taking risks that could get you in trouble. Like I'm just going to not show up for this because I'm going to go work out and hopefully I don't get reamed out later for it. And so it's kind of uh, demoralizing in a sense that like I had an opportunity for two months to, to train in boot camp, but I never got to. And ultimately it doesn't matter. I ended up going anyway, but it, I had to do two years on a ship first, which is really demoralizing for a lot of people, um, especially when you don't join the Navy with those intentions. To be on a ship? Uh, not just on a sh be on a ship, but just to not, like, th I mean, there was a war going on, and I, I was, like, literally begging people. I'm like, why can't I just switch jobs? Like, why can't I go, like, why can't you fuckers just send me to Afghanistan? Like, I'm volunteering to go, and I don't give a shit to do what. Like, it doesn't, it didn't make any sense, but, like, that's just how it works, you know? Like. So, that brings up a question I have. So, like, let's say guys sign up, they go to boot camp, and they just, like, they, they want to quit. Is there a quitting? Oh, yeah, you can quit. Well, it's hard to explain this. So, define, define what, you, uh, what you mean a little more. So, like, they want to get out. Of they the want Navy? to go, yeah, whatever signed up well, for. Well, this up for is two where, years. like, I, and this, I don't know, I've heard this. I saw, I've only seen this happen one time. Um, you, There's a clause, apparently, and this is apparently. I've never read this anywhere. I've only been told this by more than one person in the military. But there's a clause, essentially, for, like, the first three months or six months that you're in. Don't quote me on any of those fucking numbers. But there's a clause, and if you're in boot camp, all you have to do is, and I shouldn't even say this because, you know what, it's a hardship. That's what it's meant for. So if you're listening to this and you fucking use this as a way to get out <laughs> because you just did something, you're a fucking pussy. Um, but if you're, like, really against the military, I mean, everybody, like I said, everyone's going to go there and be like, oh, I want to go home. Suck it up. It's two months. It's the fucking Navy boot camp. Jesus Christ. 
But uh, <laughs> it is it's a, it's kind of a joke, dude. It's a joke how many people are still crying. And it just seems like it's a lot of just teaching you discipline and teaching you routine and, well, and you got breaking a lot you of down young, a little bit. Young people that just never been away from home. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, it is a very kind of intimidating time, but you're not doing anything. Like, they're stressing you out a little bit. It's not, I mean, but, yeah, there's, there's a way. Like, one kid, I remember we were getting – like smoked if that's what you want to call it in, in navy boot camp um where they're just like pt'ing you okay um to punish you and he stands up and he says i'm a conscientious objector <laughs> that seems mm. like the snowflake shit that's going on right now <laughs> and uh from that moment on he went in the back room had a word with uh like the master chief that was in charge of all of us over there and uh I think he he left. Like he, I never saw that dude again. He stood up, and was like, "I'm a conscientious objector, and I re- I refuse to do this anymore." That dude's in a black room somewhere. I say they, out. they, they no, <laughs> no, like that's, they do that for shit. two years. And like it basically, time. so what they do is, uh, and there's ways of going around it. Uh, when I was when I was in A school, I, I met a couple dudes like because this is back when uh, they had the what's called the don't ask, don't tell yeah, policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, gone now, right? I guess. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but I, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, and I don't know how what it's been replaced with. Hmm. Um, I think it's obviously because they're, they're having transgenders and shit in the military now. So obviously it's like it's open. You can just go in there like I'm I'm really? gay or queer or transgender. Or like there's a whole thing where like they're trying to get I, they, they have transgender sensitivity training. Um, wow. So I've heard about Jeez. a lot of this stuff, which I think is like where we're headed with this is completely wrong. It's a fucking military. The pussification of America oh, yeah, is, exactly. is active. It's strong, apparently, <laughs> if it's going to the military. Wow, sensitivity training. But, um, yeah. You should send those I, guys I in there first to just freak out like the <laughs> Taliban. You should send a transgender in there. Like they might, or it might just be like, oh, man, that's the devil. Um, just send those dudes in with a whole bunch of ecstasy and just, yeah. just spray the whole just, place down with ecstasy. Just freak them out. <laughs> Uh, I think they're they're freaked out enough, you know. I mean, there's a difference I think between the Taliban and just poor Afghani people that are just yeah, trying to yeah that's true. Lie, you know what I mean? That's true. It's just like anybody, we're all just here on this fucking shithole planet Earth and just trying to get figure by. Figure it out. Yeah. That is true. With with the uh, the army's luck, they're gonna send trans some crazy nah, transgender most one people, to the wrong like, place. They're not gonna. They're gonna do some fucking yeah. pogue shit. Um, but I met dudes, like, when I was in, it was a different policy. It don't ask, don't tell. And there were dudes that deliberately would go and get, like, stacks of gay porn and dildos and all kinds of fucked up shit and, like, get caught so they could get kicked out. Oh, because they wanted to get out. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, that's a pretty, pretty fucked up way to go out. Like, I could, one dude I know, they, they let, let him go. Uh, he, like... He had a stack of like gay porn, <laughs> gay porn DVDs, <laughs> and like so. In, in, uh, what does your discharge papers say when? when that? I think what they do is uh, they give you what's called an administrative separation. <laughs> okay. And so, um, essentially, an admin sep is like it's basically like you were never in. I got you. They can't really hold it against you. You're just kind of separated. There's no. It's not like uh, an, a dishonorable or the other one they have called a bad conduct discharge or the, the big chicken dinner. That's what they like to call it. Big chicken um, dinner. <laughs> yeah, but it's like so. Those two are like the bad ones: a uh, dishonorable discharge and a. Uh, you hear about that one occasionally. Yeah, I, I mean, I, to me, like you've got to fuck up pretty bad to get a dishonorable yeah. discharge, even a bad conduct conduct discharge is kind of like you you gotta i don't want to say try to do it but you got to do something fucked up like something you shouldn't be doing in the first place right on the criminal something uh maybe negligent but even then like it just depends but um he like slid a gay porn mag like halfway out under his closet door kind of oh, like it fell off oh, and so when they were doing room inspections when he was gone one day they fucking saw it pulled it out like what the fuck opened his closet up found all kinds of fucked up paraphernalia and pornography shit and so they like, do room inspections when you're not there yeah it's like prison oh uh, i mean it's the military <laughs> i mean you 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 are property you are literally yeah. property of the united states government i thought i thought like they did room inspections but you know you knew they it was do. coming they but sometimes they'll do like uh like they'll have 
the what's called personnel inspection. So like every morning in my entire hallway, we had four dudes to a room. And so you'd have like a hundred dudes in a hallway just lined up. Like everyone's against the wall, the doors open. Um, and they'd come by and look at you like uniform wise to make sure you're not all fucked up. You probably, they probably don't even do that now. Cause someone might cry, um, <laughs> but you know, go figure, you know, like you got to look presentable. You're right. Yeah. Sure. They have a specific, and it sucks cause it's just routine. Like every day yeah. they do it to make you just do it automatically. They turn it to, I think they're trying to teach you discipline. You know, a lot well, of the guys exactly come into it without discipline and come out of it. A lot of times with discipline. And discipline is good. And I think, I just think that at some point when you prove to be a person that no longer needs continual supervision, you should be allowed to. A little leeway. Yeah. 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 But it sucks because they put you with a bunch of fucking pieces of shit. That, and and I'm true. (laughs) It is true, man. I work with them at school right now. I've worked with them for six years in the Navy. You're like, just pieces of shit. And you're getting brought down. You're having to stand around, waste your free time or potential free time because somebody else made poor decisions. And it's like, I never really understood the whole punish everyone for the mistakes of a few mentality. It does serve a purpose, but so does, hey, guess what, guys? You guys are all here suffering because that guy over there fucked you. He fucked you. Yeah. So, you know, what? when we walk away. If he We're wants all going to gonna get, fuck you. If he wants yeah. to get his face fucking smashed <laughs> yeah. on accident, if he wants to trip and fall on the that's that's his bad. Yeah. But, yeah. It, I don't know. There's just, you get guys that are just, and girls. Um, I met a lot of people in the military, and then from then on, I, I saw this. Uh, I started seeing it everywhere. I started as cops, firefighters, nurses, people who were public servants. Uh, what happens is you get a lot of people, I feel, that don't really want to do the job. Mm-hmm. They want to put on a uniform and tell people, masquerade around and tell yeah. people, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a buddy when I was in the Navy. He said, you know, think about the first woman who enlisted. And sorry, women out there. I'm not turning this into a sexist thing as much as it is point of fact. Like, Did the first woman who en- made the big stink about becoming and in- in- getting in the military, did she do that because she actually wanted to be in the military? Or did she do that as a, a way for, you know, women's suffrage Yeah. and, and her own personal gain? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's an interesting point of view because I think that at some point, it's got to be a personal view thing. I mean, she may have wanted to be in the military, but definitely women's suffrage and uh, personal point of view, a personal personal gain. Now I'm curious. I'd like to find out who the first female. Uh, uh, I couldn't tell off the top of my head, um, but I'm just you know, because there's always been the talk about like these, these women in special operations, um, women in combat roles, which they're allowing now, and like interesting, really. Yeah, they're allowing it, and, like, uh, we actually were going to class at, on the mats with this girl, and I think she's gone now, but she was, uh, we were we were working out uh, during one of the strength and conditioning sessions with, with Kev one night, and uh, she was, like, fresh out of high school, graduated, like, fuck, she's been out of high school since breakfast, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> graduated, ah. like, two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> like, I'm going to use that. <laughs> and... I'm like, oh, you're going in the army, and she's like, you know, she's like, yeah, I leave in like 18 days, blah blah, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. What I'm like, what are you gonna do? She's like, um, airborne infantry, and I was just like, keep your mouth shut, Eric. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you find like, yourself doing that a lot, just uh, like. I just, you know what? I'm watching this girl push a fucking sled with a 35 pound weight plate on it. And she was having a very hard time. Mm. And uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I believe holding people to a stand. I don't give a shit about race, color, creed, fucking gender. If you can't perform, you can't fucking perform. Right. You shouldn't yeah. cut standards because you're a female. Right. If you want to yeah. play with the boys, you better be able to hang with the boys. I, and, and, you know, you and I have had discussions a lot about this on the yeah. podcast. Like, I'm all about female equality, but... 
you know, this is a very different situation. Like, we have to really admit to ourselves that there is a big difference between female and male biology. One can definitely do something that physically that the other can't. There's a reason why if you go into powerlifting, a, a woman could take her whole life to try to deadlift 400 pounds. If you give a guy a good routine, he could do that probably within a year. If he's, if he's, you know, if he's... There, there are physiological there's, um, differences. Yeah, there's, and I don't yeah. know why that, that has become such a... Um, taboo thing to say yeah. like, there is I, I, we I are give different. you the i give you the example i watch that show deadliest catch and that's like a mat where they catch the crabs right yeah yeah and they they had a woman come on there and like she was game she was they they even told her like you're you're better than most of the men that come out here but physically you cannot do the job right and it's not because you don't want to do it or because you're a woman well but that is because you're a woman. You're just physically built different. Right. You, you cannot, cannot do it. Physically yeah. do it. It's not because we say you're a woman. That has nothing to do with it. It's because you're just physically built different. No, there's... there's you uh, cannot do it. And I'm sure that there will be guys that were in the same boat. That just because you yeah. could do it, you're not, yeah. you're not big enough. And they told, her, yeah, right. they told her. You, 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 then, yeah. They told her. Yeah. They told her straight out. You are literally better than like 80% of the people out here right now. But mentally, you just, probably, mentally, right? like, but physically, but physically, you cannot do it. Yeah. It's just that's just how it is. And Sorry, you know, I wouldn't care if she was doing crabs, but like when we're talking a special ops team where sh there's lives at stake, and we gotta we gotta be able to depend on these team of what five guys to be able to pull off a mission. Like you gotta you gotta make sure you pick the right five people for that right five. And you're six. also talking about very fucking um, very apex males. Yeah, I think. It's not about the equality thing. It's about can you perform, and are you gonna like? I'll tell you what, because it's that's a whole different breed. Yeah, it is. It's a whole different animal. Um, we're not talking the jujitsu mats. We're not talking a boxing ring. We're not talking a wrestling mat, or maybe the football team where some girls have triumphed over men. This is something where they're gonna test you for fucking days and days and days yeah. and weeks. And you know what, like. They're going to hit a point where if in at least in that community with that mentality of people that the job that they have to do and what is required of them, they may come to a physical altercation. You know what I mean? Uh, and just because women can beat somebody on a jujitsu mat, I mean, is that going to be in real life? I mean, I'm not. I know that there's great women. I get rolled up all the time by fucking women. Hmm. But does that mean if somebody fucking smashes you on the fucking head with a headbutt, that you're going to be able to perform the same way? Does that mean when two guys come out of a fucking corner somewhere and start smashing the shit out of you, are you going to be able to roll them both up? Yeah, and it's really interesting because even when you add like endogenous testosterone to a female, like it's still not equivalent, like strength and power wise. It's very fascinating to see that. I think it's interesting that they want to put like transgender men in with females. Oh, that yeah, that's very like, odd. How the fuck is this? That's even very odd. Fair? Like, like when you see that in MMA, the women, like in outrage about this. Yeah, you know well, I mean? did you they should hear, be? Did you hear about? I think it was a young woman, or, or I don't know what it was, but it was basically like a, a man who transitioned to a female, and then um, just like shortly afterwards, uh, did the Olympic weightlifting competition and just smoked all the girls. And, like, all the girls had to do that. Oh, it was great. She's so empowering. Like, she, they had to do all that shit, but she just smoked all of them. Um, like, you just well, had, like, X amount of years to develop a male frame. You switched genders. You switched to hormones. Some of that carryover is still there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand how. And, again, back to the physiology. Like, yeah. Just because they switched over to... A different fight. hormones you don't you what, what the fuck is, i mean what is i'm sorry man but what is this are we just gonna switch is there a switch all of a sudden you're a woman now see the one just i have a, you can snip your dick off dude doesn't the, make the you the one i have a hard woman, time man. is like when you see little kids and they're letting these little kids make these decisions i'm like wait wait you're letting 16 14 year old kids in the in the fucked up time of their lives decide what gender they want to be like you need to wait till they're a little older and they know what their decision they want to make i don't make, understand man. like if you have to be 18 to vote, why isn't it the same thing? Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, man. That's yeah. true. I, I went to school with some dudes that we know what we knew that they were they were gay before we even knew what gay was. What's wrong with being gay? Nothing's that's wrong right. with being gay. That's right. what me and but him. When you start we've, fucking people up in the head like this. Yeah, we've had tough, me and man. him have had the discussion too. Like we had people that were gay in our high school, and we never we never really thought about it. 
I mean, look, I'm all for whatever you want to do. Yeah. I don't give a shit. But again, like when we were telling yeah. kids it's okay to do what switching some genders, things, yeah, it's too, um, uh, it, to me, it's too I, mean, right I don't now. care. I'm sure we're going to catch grief for yeah. this. Probably. You'd be surprised. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> At least our well, viewers don't give a shit. <laughs> well, I think that the media hypes things yeah. up that really yeah. aren't yeah. issues. They say, oh, all these people think that. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. My thing's always been like, do whatever they want. If you want to screw whoever, do it. Just don't do it in front of like the table where I'm standing. Right. And like just. Well, the Jenner guy made it so popular. It's like, <sighs> dude, Who? what's the. Oh, Bruce, like Bruce Jenner. Jenner. The guy. The oh, yeah. You know, like, and honestly, I want to say this, especially if this is going out, because to me, the fact, and I mean, the fact uh, that Time Magazine oh, made yeah. this motherfucker Woman of the Year. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Like, you if I was a woman, that? I'd be pissed. No, no, it's exactly like if, if this is, this is like, I mean, there's not much that really, I mean, I could give a fuck about pretty much everything. But you know what? Like, that is a fucking direct slap in the face to my mother, my grandmother, yeah. Yeah. my there's, sister. There's women who did incredible things that year, and it's like. Yeah, your mother's. Yeah, it's like just fuck. because you snip your and he didn't even snip his dick off, but just because you want to put fake tits in and, and snip your dick off and wear a dress, that does not make you a woman. Yeah, that's true. Women that's, grow that's, babies inside of them. Yeah. We do not do that. That's insane. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a complete disregard for. And I, I have utmost respect for women. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my grandma was one of the greatest women I've ever had the honor to meet in my life, and she's tougher than most fucking dudes I know. Yeah. And to me, like. Where were I mean again? I'm sure most women were just like whatever. We know we're better than this, but to me that's like, fuck you, Time Magazine. Yeah, I'll never yeah. give you another dime. I'll never look at any of your shit. You fucking insulted every woman. I mean, you insulted every woman that's ever done anything for women's suffrage. You, I mean, every single mother that's worked three jobs to raise her kids. Yeah. I mean, well, I think I think Time's going the way of like news. Like you look at news now. And they're talking about like like celebrity gossip and 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 I'm like, wh- since when is what Kim Kardashian's ass is doing celebrity like news? That's not news. I don't gi- I don't give a shit. Well, I don't know where this even started, long before probably we were born. But uh, where who gives a fuck what celebrities' opinions are? Right, yeah. right, right. Like you're a fucking a couple hundred years ago they called these people clowns you were courts jesters you were fucking clowns yeah, yeah. i don't give a shit what just because you're a, an actor oh wow that means your opinion matters right just because you're a basketball player you're a football player your opinion matters like yeah. good stand up for what you believe in i'm all for that but you know what shut the fuck up i'm so sick of this like uh over over like dramatic display of like oh my and it's like and it's only in my, my opinion one directional like all of this media bullshit it's all one directional it's like it's either you're with their fucking screaming motherfuckers or you're not yeah and it's mm-hmm. if you're either with them or you're like you're a racist you're yeah a fucking yeah it's a well it's a very weird society we're in now it's just it's, it's almost getting to the too socially acceptable kind of level um so you brought up you brought up the gay porn thing to get released. Do they have the military have any issues with like guys having like regular straight porn? Um, I don't know, dude. I mean, honestly, I was exposed to more pornography in the military than any any other point in my life. Um, well, you're on a boat, right? You're on a boat. Yeah, but it's just like it was like it was. I don't understand. I don't know how to explain this. Um, when we were growing up, dude, nobody had a computer. Right. <laughs> nobody had that shit. And it wasn't right. until I think I had at like 13 years old, 12 or 13 years old, I knew one guy whose dad had a computer. And his dad was like really into that stuff. Right. He built computers. They had the internet. Um, and so we were kind of like exposed to it a little bit then. But as the years grew on and more and more people started getting computers in their household, um, you started getting it became easier to get exposed to because until then it was just like oh somebody's got a dirty magazine yeah, yeah. yeah. And now yeah. like porn all, and honestly like porn um i got mixed views on this shit it's smut it's filth you know what i mean it, it fucks with your head and especially the younger you are the more it yeah fucks with your we've head. talked about yeah, that quite a bit it gives yeah. you a um what's the word False expectations. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, uh, it gives you the wrong impression of what sex with a woman's going to be like or should mm-hmm. be like. Um, 
again, it, it serves a purpose for some things when you're alone for long periods of time or like if your love life's kind of dying down and you need something to spice it up or, you know, whatever. But it it, it, it is poison for the brain. And the more you subject yourself right. to it, the more it fucks with your brain. Well, we've talked about it quite often and, and we, we, ja- we, we, ja- Jack, we joke about it quite a bit. But it's one of those situations where it's like, I go back and forth a bit on it, but also like it definitely does do that. Like I've definitely come to the realization that if you're a young man and that's what you think the norm is, like you're in a weird like yeah. niche area where you're going to be affected with the women you, you go forward with. But like also for women, it's also setting these insane high standards where now women are like, it's like all women want to get boob jobs nowadays and all women like are looking at the waist trainer things and it's like it's also very interesting what how they've been affected by pornography by males um, viewing pornography pornography and then just the whole um i don't know what what you would call it but all the glamour magazine like the whole like um it's essentially what's the word i'm looking for um barbie dolls did this to them as well um fuck is the word dude god of course i would draw a blank right now you know what i mean <laughs> it happens all the time so now and, and i kind of understand Subliminal the idea messaging okay like i worked with is a it, teacher uh, she, was, she was more of a counselor than a teacher uh and she showed me two dolls one was a doll from back in the 60s or 70s or maybe the 80s um and the other one was from current time and she was like what what's the difference here and like i don't i was like i i don't, I don't know but she was like well, look at this older one it's kind of a little bit bigger around the midsection the waist mm-hmm. thighs arms and now look at this one it's super skinny she's like this is subliminal messaging yeah was well, programming kids to have a, a standard exactly yeah i mean now they, these kids have fucking slut dolls they can play with like the brats oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i remember I, my That's first true. job ever was was toys r us and I see those brat things, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, they're all whored out. What's going on here? I mean, it was just as bad because Barbie, it started with Barbies. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at, I don't know, man. This is kind of where, like, you, got, you get into, like, conspiracies and subliminal messaging and stuff. But it's like, look around at our entire culture anymore. Yeah. And it's like, look at the Barbie doll back when we were kids. Go to any major city and start looking at people and start looking at women. You're like... Wow, it kind of is mm. like it's given the them, standard them the mm-hmm. impression, then the right. standard of what beauty is. Instead of being like, you know what? And I guess guys are the same way. You look at all these magazines. Yeah. And well, have you ever say, seen Bigger, Stronger, Faster? Yeah, yeah. That's no, a great documentary. Yeah, and he and he shows like the Luke Skywalker, the original one that came out, and he looked like a normal dude in the seventies. And then you look at Luke Skywalker now, and he's like ripped, and he's got muscles, and it's like, well, where the fuck all this? When Luke started lifting, <laughs> when Luke started getting some muscle, <laughs> he's making all kinds of gains. Yeah. So, yeah, it happens for men too, but I, I think it definitely isn't talked about as much for men. But men do also have those social pressures to have a certain physique or a certain look. But I think women definitely are more vocal and open about how they're affected by it versus how men are. Like you see guys all the time, they break up with girls and the first thing they do, they're like, I'm going go to go work out and get, get yoked. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, the whole bro mentality. Yeah. Um, I had a guy back home I know. He called them bromosexuals. <laughs> um, and it, people honestly, like, I know it might sound like hypocrisy. If people looked at me, they'd be like, well, look at you. I'm like, yeah. I started off a long time.